Good afternoon. Church attendance and church membership has plummeted in the United States over the last dozen or 15 years or so. And there's lots of theories about why fewer people are participating in church. My guess is there's probably more than one reason for this trend. But I'd like to suggest one more possible reason of my own. Churches are providing a scratch where no one is itching. Churches are busy telling people that Jesus saves us from our sin, and he certainly does. Through his grace, Jesus removes the guilt and burden of our sin. There's one problem. There's not a lot of people out there feeling burdened by their sin, unless they're carrying a guilt trip that churches have imposed upon them. People aren't out there looking to find forgiveness. No, churches will manufacture the need by telling us how sinful we are and then announce that we have a solution. Guess what? Jesus saves you from this sin. Closely related to this, churches will also tell us that we need to accept Jesus as our Savior if we want to go to heaven. And again, that's true. The Bible is clear that the only way to enjoy God's heavenly glory is through Christ. But again, there's a problem. I don't see a lot of people out there who are anxious about getting into heaven, unless, of course, they're facing the end of their life, whether it's because of old age or disease. No, for many people, concern about getting into heaven is about as relevant as what the weather is in Australia right now. In fact, there's lots of people who are skeptical about any kind of life in the hereafter at all, let alone in heaven. So if churches focus on forgiveness of sin or getting into heaven, the reality is most people simply don't care. Now, I'd like instead to suggest that there is an itch. There is a massive itch that people struggle with. In fact, this struggle runs so deep that many people don't even realize that there could be a way to scratch it at all. I'm talking about the search for meaning. What is the point of it all? Why do we go through these motions of living? Why does any of this matter at all? I mean, for many of us, we get up, we go to work, we come home, we relax a bit, we go to sleep, and the next day we get up and do the same thing. Rinse, lather, repeat. Oh, you might set your hopes on a couple of weeks of vacation, or maybe there's a few other activities you enjoy. You get to cheer for your favorite sport team or go out with some friends. But is that all there is to life? Just to catch a few moments of pleasure here and there in the midst of the drudgery? Isn't there more to life than this? That's the question I believe many people struggle with, or they just don't struggle with it at all because they've given in to cynicism and boredom. Ecclesiastes is probably the most modern book of the Bible we have, because Ecclesiastes is all about trying to find meaning and purpose. And the book starts out with a despairing lament. Meaningless, meaningless, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Generations come and generations go, and there's nothing new. There's nothing different. And then the author of Ecclesiastes goes through all sorts of things that might bring purpose to life. What if I focus on getting wisdom or pleasure or riches? What if I focus on hard work and career advancement or friendships? But in the end, Ecclesiastes says, none of this matters. None of them make a difference in the end. And that is exactly what troubles many people today. Nothing seems to matter. There's a reason why one of the most popular Christian books to come out in the past few decades was entitled The Purpose Driven Life. That book offered a scratch where people are itching. They want a purpose for life. And the good news is that God offers us a purpose for living. Our lives can have meaning and significance. You can start with a simple fact that you have been made in God's image. You are called and loved by God. You matter to the creator of everything that exists. And you have a place in his plan for the world. You can make a difference. 
There is more to life than simply chasing after what feels good. And as you discover your place in God's plan, you will realize that you are part of something bigger than yourself. What is your purpose? What brings meaning to your life? Well, the answer is different for each of us, and that's the beauty of God's plan. We don't live in a cookie-cutter world. God Taylor makes a purpose for each of us. But perhaps one hint to our purpose for living is to get over ourselves. As long as our lives are focused on ourselves, they're going to be pointless. But it is when we look above ourselves, to those around us, to the world around us, to the God who rules over all, that is when we find purpose and meaning. Yes, forgiveness for sin is important. Getting into heaven is important. But perhaps if churches quit focusing so much on sin and on heaven and spend more time helping people find their reason for life, then maybe churches will regain their relevance in our society. Would you pray with me, please? Yes, Lord, we are grateful that you release us from sin and suffering and death. And yes, Lord, we are thrilled at the promise of heaven. But in addition to this, Lord, help us to turn to you for purpose and meaning in our lives. And for those of us who are part of a church, help us focus on how our faith can bring purpose and meaning into lives of people who so often are overwhelmed by boredom and cynicism. Help us know, Lord, that things are not meaningless and there truly is a purpose for it all. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.